Thanks. Hi. I didn't really think about it until I got here um, that I was in your position a few years ago. I thought I was here to talk about, you know, how to get your projects published on the zine and how to get noticed. But I realized that 15 years ago, I was kind of in a big company and not quite sure where I wanted to go. I'm not suggesting for one minute you follow the direction I took because it was quite tragic and brutal and stressful. But uh, I'm going to do two things today. First of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the zine and how it started and what it is and, and my background. And then the second bit, which is probably the bit you all here for, is to tell you how you can get your work published on the zine. But that kind of applies to all kinds of um, online publications, I imagine. Um, getting noticed online, I guess that could be my, my, my story as well. <laughs> how I went from um, working on print to, to the internet. Um, okay, so Dezine is the, the company that I started 11 years ago. You hopefully all know it. It's a, it's, a, it's a blog, really, but we call it a magazine because in the early days, a blog was something that was amateurish and a bit crap and a bit opinionated, so we deliberately called it an online magazine to make it sound a little bit more grown-up and um, establishment. Um, and, of course, the Internet is not really a, th a single thing anymore, and an audience is not a single thing online. So we have people who use the desktop version. We have people who use the, the mobile phone version. Interestingly, though, unlike most websites, the vast majority of our readers still use desktop computers. And that's because we're one of the few websites that people are allowed to use at work. So the boss will come round and say, what are you doing online? I'm looking at Dezine, sir. And they'll go, good, good, you're clearly doing research for your vital architectural project. It took us a long time to figure out why our mobile figures hadn't overtaken our desktop, and we think that's why. Uh, so a little bit about us. So we're, we're based in Hoxton. This is our office. We finally now walk the walk. After talking the talk of design, of, um, design for 11 years, we finally have an architect design office. But believe me, a few years ago, it was a ramshackle hellhole that we wouldn't have wanted to put in a, a picture. This is the team. We have 30 people in London. They're overwhelmingly young. Our kind of hiring strategy until quite recently is to be to hire young and keen and cheap. Um, but now, <laughs> but now, now we're growing up, and now we're trying to actively buy an experience to, 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 to because we, we kind of created a little design bubble and realized that there's all kinds of things going out there, and you kind of need that impact of other people who've had other experiences. So 30 people in London, three people in New York, and we have a robot. We have the first robot on the, the payroll. Uh, and I tell this story because in the creative industries, and I consider Dezine to be a creative business, and I consider myself to be a creative person, even though I'm definitely a journalist and not a designer, um, even though I just study design, disaster, good at the writing, bad at the, at the design. Um, but people think that we're safe from automation, but we are not safe from automation. We hired a robot, and this isn't actually the robot. <laughs> it doesn't like wander around the office like making whirring noises. Um, but it's an algorithm, and the algorithm um, tell, uh, suggests what stories people might want to, to look at next. And the robot is twice as effective as the person who used to do that, so watch out. So a little bit about Dezine. So Dezine is the, the world's most popular and influential architecture and design magazine. The influential bit, we kind of say that, but we can't really prove it. But the most popular bit, we can definitely prove that with data, because the great thing about the internet is it's data heavy. We're also one of the most 5,000 most visited websites in the world. And interestingly, and this, is a, this was a kind of surprise to someone who came from the world of print to the world of journalism, one of the 1,000 most commented websites in the world. Uh, uh, the great change between digital journalism from print journalism is a two-way dialogue. And in, in the context of you guys and talking to, sort, of, sort of building an online profile, and it's not just about getting your stuff published on websites like Dezine, but realizing that your brand needs to permeate the digital space as well as the physical space, um, that's one of the key things to bear in mind. It's not about just chucking your amazing design out there onto the internet and hoping everyone's going to go, wow. People are going to go, you made a spelling mistake, or <laughs> you didn't get your horizontals quite lined up, or... I'm not sure about the filter you used there, or, or, or that's libelous, I'm going to sue you. Uh, we have you know, fairly huge um, uh, visitors. And the, the interesting thing about video, and I think this is something that, that my hot tip for architects is get video smart. So, like, video is a fantastic tool for talking about architecture. It's, it's massively underexploited. 
if I have time, I'm going to show a couple of videos we've made. But um, communicating architecture through video is an amazing, amazing opportunity. Very, very global. So you definitely want your project to be published on Dezine because people all around the world will see you. And there's a quick list of the of the, the countries, the most popular countries where we're read. And the surprising thing there is India is up at number three. Um, China, where we were blocked for a long time, has jumped up to number 12. Um, architecture is really, really popular. I, I, did a, I was at a conference in Barcelona earlier this week about architecture and the media, and it was kind of full of all these journalists saying, oh, why don't we get architecture in the national newspapers? Nobody understands or likes architecture. And outside my hotel was the Gaudi house, Casa Guell, and they were, the streets was five deep with people taking pictures of this building, and I put a picture of all these tourists doing selfies in front of this Gaudi building to say, Architecture is really, really, really popular. We write about architecture, design, and interiors on Dezine, and architecture is by far the most popular thing. So don't feel sorry for yourselves that you're in a dead-end industry or you're underpaid or whatever. <laughs> you are glamour, and people love what you do. Um, now, these are our social media sites. We have a massive social media audience, and social media is really important to us, and it should be to you too. Like, build your social media platforms, both for your companies and for yourselves. Um, that in terms of the, the Jennifer was talking about your personal brand, the social media is the easiest and, and most powerful way of representing your, your, uh, your brand when you can't be physically in the room. But be really careful because there, nobody can tell the difference between your, where your personal brand stops and where your business brand ends. And I've had that with a few of our team when they've been on work trips and then suddenly from it being like, look at this amazing thing I saw at the design show, it's like suddenly team members like lying semi-conscious on the street, and you're thinking like, oh, God. <laughs> Image control. Now, Dezine is very much a brand. When I started Dezine, I, I wanted to build a brand rather than a magazine. So you can see we're kind of obsessive about the way we present stuff. We have all these different platforms. Our branding strategy is very simple. We put the word Dezine and then another word after it. Dezine Awards, Dezine Jobs, Dezine Hotlist, etc. Dezine Hotlist is a... Is a we, we like to be creative with journalism. We like to kind of find new ways of presenting information. Dezine Hotlist was a project where we, we used data to figure out who were the most in, in, influential and, and talked about people in, in the world in architecture and design. The first one we did, it turned out that Zaha did was the most um, talked about person. Um, we also have a recruitment platform. I've, I've got to plug my business a little bit, right? It's a great place. If any of you are not happy where you are... <laughs> And when they leave, then your line manager should use this as well. <laughs> and we've just launched a, an awards platform, uh, a, a Design Awards for the first time. This, this is the final marketing message from me. <coughs> Enter now. Another way of getting online. Just quickly a bit about me. Um, I discovered architecture and design when I was in the art library at school. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I discovered this magazine, and I suddenly fell in love with the whole culture of architecture and design. Um, I studied design... Uh, at degree level, um, but I was rubbish at it. But I was living in a high-rise sort of Cabusian um, housing estate in Wolverhampton. I, it w w they'd put students in there because nobody else wanted to live there, and we were cheap. Um, and I w witnessed a riot from my balcony, and, and I, I, I did my whole dissertation about what went wrong with that Cabusian vision of architecture. And I got really, really into it, and I kind of met the people who designed the, 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 the local authority architects who designed this housing estate, and, and they were admitted that they were now doing sort of postmodern things because that was the latest fashion. And I think this was when I discovered that, that my talent was not for designing, but my talent was for um, explaining design to other people. So the world has been saved, my awful design, but now has my words. And this, this was the, the reality of, of this Corbusian vision. This was the entrance to my, my block where I lived. And then I, it took me, I was a very late starter in my career. It wasn't until I th was 30. I, I, I lived abroad and I came back and I thought I need to get a career together and journalism is probably the right one for me. And I landed my first prestigious editorial job editing Click, the magazine for uh, five to seven year olds who lived overseas and were learning English. It was like pop quizzes and things like that. High quality stuff. And then, I don't know if any of you, you're all too young to remember. Do you remember getting BD through the posts? I started out on BD... Um, then I got a job on building magazine, so I was like, you know, trade mag guy. And then I got my lucky break. Um, I got headhunted to launch Icon magazine, which was a tremendous success until I published my first book um, and got fired. 
it's a long, boring story, but um, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. So this is where, this is where our, your career paths and mine might diverge, because I got fired. I had to do something with my life. I had two young children. And I thought, this internet thing, maybe there's something in that. <laughs> I got really lucky. So I, I, was, um, I was the first professional journalist who started a design blog. And um, it looked like this to start with, as you can see, like um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, and talking about going, referring back to Jennifer now, I had connections, I had people that I knew, I was friends with people like Thomas Heatherwick and, and um, people like that, and they trusted me as a journalist. So I would say, Thomas, this new beach cafe you're opening, can you send me the pictures for my design blog? He was like, design blog? On the internet? Are you mad? And every time I see Thomas Heatherwick now, he's like, I was wrong. <laughs> he hasn't done badly either. But I was, I was, a <laughs> I was able to um, build um, a, a reputation online very, very quickly because no one else had the connections um, and, 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 and I was getting this, all this exclusive content and I also was um, not afraid of talking to anyone. So the first thing I did when I got fired and I was starting to see it, I, was, I thought there was this conference called Design, this event called Design Miami in Miami. I thought, I'm gonna to go to Design Miami, I'm gonna meet all the important people in that world and give them my book, because I might as well make some use out of my book. Uh, and I got invited to a garden party and Kanye West was there. And everyone's going, is Kanye West over there? What's he doing here? And I said, I'm gonna go and ask him. So I went over to Kanye West and I said, hi, what are you doing here? And he was like, Oh man, I love design. And he really opened up and he talked, me about his, talked to me about his collection of Martin Bass furniture and the Campana brothers. And he told me that Claudio Silvestri and the London architect was doing his New York apartment. And I was like, oh wow, that's really interesting. Can I publish it on my design blog? And he was like, speak to my publicist. So about a month later, I got the exclusive visuals for uh, Kanye West's Manhattan apartment. And, um, oops. Sneak preview, Kanye West's apartment. So this is the moment when Dezine made the big time because this story went absolutely viral and got picked up by the, the hip hop community in America who were like, Kanye's crib, Kanye's crib, whoa, where does the guy take a dump? Because they, they couldn't. <laughs> They couldn't read architectural plans, but it was hilarious. So thank you, thank you to my former bosses at Icon for firing me, and thank you to Kanye West. Um, and, um, and, and this is this was kind of our, our moment of fame when Apple used us in the launch of the iPhone um, 5 campaign and the launch of the MacBook Pro Retina screen. So uh, that was um, that was a bit of a disaster for us actually, because everyone wanted to know um, how we got um, on Apple. And um, all these Mac fanboy sites linked to us, and all the traffic just took our servers out. So everyone says, oh, that must have been amazing for your, your audience figures. And it's like, no, disaster, shut us down. <laughs> um, OK, so um, I think Design has had a, had a kind of fairly profound impact on the world of architecture and design. This was a really amazing quote. I interviewed an architect, a designer sorry, called Oki Sato from Nendo in, Japan, in New York a few years ago. And I didn't even ask him about Dezine, but he just said this. He thinks Dezine changed the world. He, he took away the boundaries between um, cultures. In the olden days of print, um, there were kind of isolated bubbles of, of design cultures. You'd have your blueprint magazine in the UK, for example, or Domus in Italy, and then AD in the States or whatever, and they didn't really talk to each other. Um, and it wasn't Dezine that broke all that. It was the internet, really, but Dezine was the kind of the, the pace setter in, in creating a global culture of architecture and design. And um, so, I mean, the message of this slide is like, if you get published on Design, it can actually make a huge um, change to your career. We've launched lots and lots of careers and lots and lots of people, and we're very, very proud of that. And that's my favorite quote of all. I met Rem at an event, and he said to me, oh, you're the Design guy. And I said, yeah, and he's like, you became dominant. <laughs> But this is what you're all here for, right? This is about getting published. Like, how do you, how do you um, get published? And so I've actually, this is, I, I, I didn't spend very long putting this bit together. I must admit, RB, I'm really sorry. Because um, uh, um, you can just go on that page and it's all there. <laughs> but how do we find stories? So, I mean, really, we're just like anyone else. So we scour the internet. So I would say at the moment, Instagram is one of the key places where I find story tips for the team. Instagram is this fantastic visual um, profile. Do, ha, is there any hands up here if you? If you oh, this is going. No one's going to. No one's going to admit to not having an Instagram account. Does anyone here not have an Instagram account? 
Get with the program, guys. <laughs> Uh, Instagram is by far the most engaged um, of all the social media platforms. Actually, Facebook is the one that has the, we have the, the, the biggest traffic to our site from, but Instagram was almost designed for um, visual people, architects, designers, and so on and so forth. So we scour Instagram to a lesser extent, um, other social media channels, and then of course um, the, 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 other, the other media to some extent, and then the real world, so we go to conferences and, and things like that. But by, 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 by far, 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 the biggest place where we get content from is people email it directly to us. So what I'm gonna talk about mostly is how to make your project stand out from the, um, I recently stopped um, I cut off my access to the submissions email address, but I was getting like 500 emails a day. So literally our team spend like a, a mic, you talked about a tenth of a second to evaluate whether you're gonna, you're gonna get on with a person. Same with us, tenth of a second to evaluate whether that project has got any chance of making it to the next stage in the editorial process. Um, I'd once did a talk when I was in print at, at um, Icon and it was to students, it was how to get published, and I literally brought in the post bag from that week, and it was hundreds and hundreds of parcels, and I tipped it out onto the floor, and I went through it, and I opened up an envelope, and it was like, no, bin, 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 bin. And we do now do the same thing with email, because a large part of uh, our job is deleting emails. That's kind of probably the, the biggest single task that we do. So it has to stand out, your submission has to stand out. Images, 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 images. I mean, duh. Images are like the, the bread and butter of, of architecture. I mean, just get the best quality images that you can. Get the most amazing images, get the best photographer, get two photographers, have two sets, have a different atmosphere in each one, and don't hold back. It's, you can't have too many images. I mean, you can have too many images as attachments in an email. <laughs> Like send us three and there's more here, link. But just focus on the images. But I tell you what, the thing that's becoming a problem with the images, copyright. Suddenly, it's becoming an issue because the internet was a wild west until quite recently. You could, you could send images, you could steal them off other people's site. Not us, we never did that, but <laughs> honest. Um, but um, sometimes, now what's happening is some photographers, uh, uh, architects are paying photographers to shoot the images not signing a copyright waiver, the architects send the images to us, and then we get a legal note. It's a big problem. So alongside images, we now have to talk about the importance of clearing the rights to those images. Really, really, really important. Because we're changing our terms and conditions and putting the owners back onto the architect, saying, oh, you told us, you promised that you'd have had clearance. Um, exclusivity, we, we, all, we all like exclusivity. Um, um, we don't like promiscuous architects who sleep with everyone and send all of their projects to everyone at the same time and do little secret deals. It's all right to, it's all right to send out a press release to all of your media friends and say, here's my new project. But um, if you're going to do a one-on-one, -on -one, say, look, I love Dezine. I'd like you to have my project first. Get back to me within 48 hours. Otherwise, I'm going to send it to, you know, write it nicely. It's not like a ransom note or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone likes to be first. And if you don't hear back from us because we are busy, then we'll totally understand. Like, maybe send us one reminder and then, okay, it's fine. You can go and send it to Arch Daily or some other bastards. <laughs> Movies, I mentioned this already, but movie content is extremely popular on the internet, especially um, on Facebook and Instagram. I mean, you will get, you'll get significantly more views of your content if it moves. Uh, you, uh, to a lesser extent, the internet and you, YouTube is the, is the premier platform for streaming uh, images on the, on, the, on the internet, but when you're talking about the kind of the social media platforms that are sort of separated off from the internet, Facebook and Instagram are the two key ones, and people love moving image content. Plans, drawing, drawings, and sketches. Um, yes, please send us everything. I mean, um, architects, they actually write in and complain if we publish a building and don't publish the plan. It's like, it's not up to us. I mean, if the architect doesn't want to share the plans or it's you know, some private dwelling and they don't want to, like the sleeping arrangements, I don't know, maybe a bit weird or whatever. Um, but just people love all of that background about the, the process that got to the, the final images. People love that kind of stuff. 
Uh, and of course, text goes without saying, and I, I should have put this at the beginning, actually, because as often it's an afterthought. We get the most hilariously bad, you get amazing images where they spent loads of time, all the time designing the project, and then tidying up the plans and the, and the elevations and all that kind of stuff, and um, amazing photography, and they've hired a helicopter, and Iwan Barnes done it, and then the text is just utter gobbledygook. A lot of companies now hire journalists. I mean, I shouldn't tell you this because you'd be poaching my staff. But um, really think about your, your text. And, and when we say think about the text, like, actually, I'm going to kind of spoil the surprise of my last points now. But it's really important, and again, back to Jennifer's point, it's like really important to figure out who you are. What, don't, don't think, don't put on a press release hat and, and, and marketing hat and just spew out generic nonsense. Really think about what, what this project means to you. How did you design it? Be really honest. Be really, really truthful. Say it in your own words. Because that's what we're looking for. Because the images are one thing, but if there's a great story behind it, like a personal anecdote from the lead designer or something like that, or a, some insight into the client, or the, you know, the how did you solve the problem or something like that, that's really, really great. Because um, there will come a time when we don't need words on the internet anymore, because the image will be um, uh, what's the word? Will, will be what's the word when you don't need anything else? Anyway, you know what that thing. Um, but for now, we need text because Google needs to find the text in order to find to find the image. So words are still um, supreme on the internet. So think really carefully about your words uh, and credit everyone. And this also goes back to the the copyright thing in a way. But make sure you're generous. Make sure you include all the people who took the pictures, who worked on the project, just send all of that information as well. Because we spend so much time dealing with people who write in and said, it's not fair, I did the structural engineering and I'm not mentioning it, and they promised they'd mention it, and da 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 And it's like, it's not our problem, but we also want everyone to be happy and credited. And then, and then, then comments. I mentioned at the beginning how um, comments is like a real phenomenon on Dazeen. You've probably noticed that, and you've probably gone like, oh my god, how do they do that? But actually, um, the way we, we learned the way to deal with trolls, the way to deal with people who just spew venom at projects, is just to be really nice to them. And then they just go away. It's unbelievable. I think they're just lonely and you just want a bit of attention. But if you, if you shout back at them, they shout even louder. But if you patiently explain, and some of the best conversations on Dazeen have been when someone's waded in and said, I, why, are, why I can't believe there's no stair rail on that project. You know, they clearly want babies to die. And the architect will patiently explain that in Japan, the building codes are different. Da, 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 da. And they go, oh, I didn't realize that. And it's really great. So you can have a dialogue with people on, on the comments section. And then, and then, of course, the, the internet is a great sharing economy, and so when st your thing gets published or it's out there on Dazeen or whatever platform, link it, share it, share it with your friends. I've started putting things on LinkedIn again. I, don't, I always thought that LinkedIn was just something where it, you, just, you just connected with someone and that was it. But actually, now suddenly, LinkedIn is a really vibrant platform, platform I've noticed in the last few months. And there we are. So it, all, all of our submissions guidelines are set out there. In, um, in our submitter story page. Have I gone over my time? Yeah, a couple more minutes. Huh? A couple more minutes. Okay, so I'm going to then show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sh I'll show you this, because this was my point about video. This is a video we made for um, the Serpentine Pavilion, and we shot it with a drone. And I hope you can see what I mean, like drone um, video can transform the experience of viewing architecture. Oh, and there's, there's no words because you know most people watch videos on the internet with the sound turned off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat a bit. I'm gonna skip to the next video because this is what I really want you to see. This is a document. We've, we've made a documentary about how drones will change cities, and we're launching the full length. Um, movie on Sunday in New York, and this is the trailer. Because dr drones are going to change architecture. Buy a drone, that's my, that's, I should have put that as one of my tips. <laughs> Turn the sound up a bit. Drones, 10, 15 years ago, were immensely expensive, complex objects. Now you can just buy them at a toy shop. Day to day, we use a drone a lot. It's a really useful tool for an architect. 
now that drones are in the hands of every person on the street, they're potentially as disruptive as the internet. Drones are like an expanded consciousness, an extra eye that allow us to reach places that otherwise we would never reach. There is a lot of implications in terms of drones changing the way architecture is perceived and also in the future the way architecture is built. You've probably all seen the video of the drones making a bridge using fibers. Delivery drones are here right now. You can go online and look at them delivering objects. And I think the next step is going to be humans traveling in drones. I think you could well see the development of aerial highways. Parking for the drones would all be on the roof. Recharging for the drones would potentially on the roof. It's going to be probably this cloud of wasps all over the place. Oh, so my three key leadership challenges. <laughs> Back to reality. Um, yeah, and I, I, Jennifer and I, we didn't talk about this before, but I totally believe this. This is what I did. This is how I launched my, my business and I, I ran my own personal vision. Luckily, it was a vision that other people were happy to kind of um, uh, consume and share. But figure out who you are. Be honest about who you are. Journalists are great bullshit detectors. Uh, and be engaged, and by that I'd be, be engaged with the world around you, the issues that are important to people, and, and try and channel that through what you do. Thank you.